Hi, I'm going to show you how to make a histogram like this of the results of repeatedly throwing two dice. Here we are in Kojo, and you may already know how to uh, draw a rectangle, but let's make a function for that. And the thing that changes among these rectangles is the height, so we'll pass in height as an argument. And that's an int. And um, you can experiment with the best way to do this, but this seems to work pretty well. Go forward by the height, turn right 90 degrees, and then go forward by width, which we'll create in a minute, and then another right turn, 90 degrees. So let's put width here. And let's just choose a width of 20. These are... Uh, whoops, I just did a zoom. These are 20 wide. Okay, and then uh, if we want to test this out, let's do clear, and we'll clear the output pane too, and then we'll um, set the animation delays so it won't be super slow, and then we'll call rect with a height of, say, 100, and here we go. So there's a bar that's 100 high. Okay, so there's a, there's a function that draws a rectangle. Now, um, let's make a function that does uh, simulating, that does the simulation, the whole thing. Let's do it uh, here. Simulate. And we need a way to count how many twos we've had, how many threes we've had, and so forth. And we're going to use an array for that. An array is like a, a bunch of values, in this case, integers, that are useful for counting more than one thing. If you have a score, that's a single thing to count. If you have a bunch of scores, you might use an array for that. So let's make an array called counts. It's an array of integers. And we have 13 elements, even though there are really only uh, 11 outcomes, 2 through 12, um, array, accessing arrays usually starts at 0, so there's 0 and 1. We'll never get any 0, 1s or 1, so we'll ignore those. Um, this is just kind of convenience that we use an array of 13 elements, we're and we're only going to use the 11 elements. We're going to skip the first two. Uh, now we're going to make a function that rolls a, sim, uh, a single die, and to do that, we use the random function. And the random function gives you, um, in Kojo, gives you a random integer between 0 up to, but not including the number you give. So this would give 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. But we want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That's why we add 1. Now I'm going to do the repeat a thousand times. And then we'll calculate the outcome, which is the result of rolling the first die plus rolling the second die. And then we're going to modify this counts array. Um, so outcome is going to be a number between 2 and 12, and we're going to use that number to get into the array and then add 1 to what's there. When the array is created initially, it's all set to zeros. So counts, outcome, plus equal 1. That adds 1 to whatever the current value is at that location in the array. Then if we want to display the results, we could do something like this, 2 to 12 for each n print line the counts at n. Now we're ready to try this out. So I'm done with this rect function. I'm just going to, I'm not going to call it anymore here. But I'm going to call simulate, and let's see what we get. OK, that's good to have some errors. It's helpful to see how to fix them. It doesn't like line 11. Um, it's looking for a right parenthesis. Where did I leave off a right parenthesis? Here. OK. It worked that time, and here we have the number of times we got two 
the number of times we got three, four, and so on. Uh, so I'm going to de declare that the simulate function is working. Now let's make a function to draw the histogram. And to draw the histogram, it, it needs the counts array of integers. And I'm going to keep this rect function, but I'm going to put it inside the histogram function because it's only needed inside the histogram function. Um, one other thing I need to do in the simulate function is return the counts. And then save them here. So we're calling the simulate function. The simulate function does the work and returns this array of integers, which we're going to save right here in the variable counts, the value counts. Uh, OK, so we've got the histogram function. We've got, uh, we need to add some values. We have to decide that the width, uh, here, let's just move this from here. And let's decide that the spacing between each bar is five pixels. And let's calculate the starting position. Uh, this is this is zero on the x-axis. We want it to start over here to the left a little bit, but how much? Well, there are 11 bars total, so six times the width of one bar plus the spacing is a good way to go. Now we're going to draw each bar. The bars are numbered from 2 to 12, so for each one. We have a variable called i. So i is going to take on these values from 2 to 12. And um, first, let's calculate the x and y coordinates of the bottom left corner of the, of the bar rectangle. So x, and they, when we always use this start x value that we computed here, and we, we add something to that. So we start wherever, and then we add something depending on what bar we're working on. And we need to um, multiply i by the width plus the spacing. Um, and so the bigger i is, the farther over to the right we're going to go. And the y value is a little bit easier because we just want to go down a little bit because we don't want to draw the bars starting here. We want them to be down. Jump to x and y, positions the turtle at the x and y coordinates we've calculated. And let's draw the bars in blue. Now we, ha now we can use our rect function. And um, for the height, we need to go and look up the number from the counts array. And we'll just use these. So 21 would give you 21 pixels high. And so let's use counts, uh, counts, let's call it that. Counts, and which one are we interested in? Well, i takes on the values 2 to 12, so we use i to get at the current one. Okay, and then we will, um, well, let's, let's test out this much of it. We're going to do the simulation, and then we're going to call histogram with the counts. And let's see how this goes. Very good. Excellent. I just want to add some numbers, add the labels below the bars. And for that, we're going to use another jump to. And um, we'll position the text based on the bottom left point here. So we'll go halfway in, back to the left a little bit to account for the width of the text, and then down by some fixed amount. And that'll position us so that we can draw the text. x plus half the width of the bar minus 
about half the width of the text. And then for Y, we just go down a little bit. And then we use right I, and right will draw text. And I, I is a number, but it'll convert it to text and it'll draw that. Let's see. Cool. And let's just make the um, pen color for the text black. Good. Okay. Reviewing. We made a function that simulates throwing, uh, rolling two dice a thousand times. And we have an array that, that we use to keep track of how many twos, threes, fours, and so on we've, we've had. And um, we roll. And we add one to the element of the array. And then we display the numbers here. And then we return the array of counts. Then here's a function that draws a histogram, and a histogram of what? Well, a histogram of this counts array of integers. And we've chosen these numbers here, which we can change, and you can change. Um, and um, therefore the width and spacing. And then we calculate the starting position of the series of bars. Here's a function that draws a rectangle. And from bar 2 to 12, 2 to 12 here, we draw each bar by calling the rect function after uh, calculating the x and y coordinates and setting the pen color. And then we draw for each bar the, uh, these labels here. And uh, that's it. So I hope you got something out of that.